Greetings again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We do thank you this morning for joining us our Sunday school hour. We do come this morning at our worship hour. We thank God for you joining us this morning. We're going to uh, get ready for a worship song. Then we'll get into our message this morning. Uh, we do thank God for you joining us on Friday evening at our worship hour. Join us on Friday evening at our Bible Institute. We've been studying uh, family, marriage, uh, sex, and the uh, the gospel. We talked about how God had, had designed everything so that the word of God can go out through the world and then get into uh, each family, he said, from generation to generation. So we do thank God for you joining us this morning. We're going to have this worship song. It was a great thing. It was a great thing that he done for me. Oh, we're gonna start it off from the start of the day. It was a great thing that he set me free. Well, he loved that on Calvary for the whole wide world to see. It was a great thing that he did for me. The Lord has brought me through all of my sorrow. And when I fell in, he didn't cast me away. He stood right by me through all of my troubles. And when I Verses 1 through 6, very familiar text. Hebrews 11, chapter, 
verses 1 through 6. Our scripture reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, and that things that were seen were not things that which appear. Uh, by faith Abel uh, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God has translated him. For before his translating, he had his testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. God's words for God's people. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, we used to like to listen to Parliament Funkadelic. Mm -hmm. And they had this song called Loose Booty. And, and don't get excited, I'm not going to talk about that this morning. Uh, but do I have any witnesses in the house that used to remember that song back in the day? He says, any meeny mighty mo catch a junkie by the toe. If he holler, let him go. And if he don't, do the loose booty. He said, junkie twist, nonsense. But I didn't, I'm not talking about loose booty. I'm not talking about junkie twist. What I'm talking about this morning is the nonsense. Sometimes nonsense becomes uh, our uh, way of living and understanding and trying to make it in the world today. I said that to let us know that we did a lot of stuff back in the day that didn't make any sense. Do I have any witnesses in the house? I know I'm not the only one in here that, that I know what I'm talking about. You ain't been saved all your life. You ain't been in church all your life. You had some, you did some, and you had some loose booty moments in your life just like I did. And I ain't the only one up in here that acted crazy when he was born up. I won't let the Holy Ghost feel fire baptized speaking in tongues, folk, today that believe that they ain't never been done anything. They've been saved all of their life. Sometimes things happen in your life that don't make sense. That's and you right. have been part of it just like I have. Yeah. Do I have any witnesses? Yeah. You can't understand how God works things out sometimes in your life. You can't figure out what God takes you through. Uh, some of the stuff that you have in your life that he does. But most of us don't understand what we're going through right now. All the hell that you're going through and when you're trying your best to make it, do things right in your life. Now I know I got your attention this morning. It makes no sense what stuff that we got to go through in this life is nonsense. Jesus said that he made the sun rise on evil and on good and send rain on the just and the unjust. That don't make sense to me. Why is it that good folk enjoy stuff just like uh, bad folk and bad folk enjoy stuff just like good folk? It don't make sense to me. You know, and he said that, and, and, and then Jesus gives us the dirt. Why did he say that? For if we love them that love you, what reward have you? And do you not even the publicans do the same? If you salute your brethren only, uh, what do you more than others? Do not even the, Repub no, the publicans do so? But only through Jesus can we understand how life makes sense out of this madness that we're in. We're in a crazy world. We're going through some crazy stuff. But somehow, yeah. God, through Jesus Christ, yeah. can give us the power to make sense out of all of that. So Thank today, you. I want to talk to you on the Thank subject, you when your senses don't make sense. When your senses don't make sense. Let us bow. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come. And as we come, Lord, we ask that you would just touch the lips of your dear servant. Let me speak those things that you have laid upon my heart. Let me speak the truth of your word with power and of authority where men, women, boys, and girls will come to the knowledge of knowing that you are God and besides thee there is none other. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. When your senses don't make sense. You know, God blessed us with 
these sensory organs that let us know what is happening all around us. These sensory organs, your eyes, your ears, your tongue, your skin, and your nose, they help us understand and protect the body and help us understand what environments that we are around. In the human sense, the organs, they are receptors that somehow they relay information through our sensory neurons to the appropriate places in our uh, neural system or nervous system that will be able to help us to identify and recognize what's around us and what we should be aware of and what we should not be aware of. That's what our senses do. Mm -hmm. God has designed us with these senses, eyes that we use for vision, ears that we use for hissing, listening, nose that we use for breathing and smelling, skin that we use to understand pain and temperature, and then a tongue where we use to be able to talk but also taste. So each sensory organ contains different receptors, and these general receptors are found throughout the body because they are present in the skin, in our, uh, uh, our abdominal cavity, in our muscles, in our joints, and special receptors include chemical receptors that are found in your mouth and your nose, and they're called proto uh, receptors. Those are light receptors found in your eyes and uh, those uh, mechanical receptors. Those are found in our ears. So scientific studies have allowed us a great understanding of this transmission of information between our senses and our brain. The perception, in fact, is condensed into a very narrow range. The senses act like filters and they narrow range of sensory capabilities that safely uh, help us to sort out and to prevent the brain from being overloaded, becoming right. overloaded with sensory information, uh, but simultaneously allowing the brain to form uh, certain receptions about the information that's needed. So it gets rid of the information that's not needed, but it somehow allows the information to get through that is needed. Yeah. The sensory system is very complex and notable intricate system of the body cannot survive without it. And, and the loss of one or two of these sensory organs will mess your life up. The loss of an entire sensory system will render the body incapable of survival itself. But my question today is, how do you deal with things in the world when your senses doesn't make sense? When your senses are telling you to be aware of things, but your eyes not seeing what your eyes see. Your All ears right. are not hearing what your ears hear. Your skin is not feeling what's around you. What your ears and your eyes and your tongue taste don't add up. Things look like, but they don't be like, can't it? Have you ever been around folk that act like, but they are not really like that? So that's the problem is our senses has to be able to distinguish what one is right and one is wrong. Right. Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. Uh, he said that, but it is written, I have not seen, no ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. But God has revealed it unto us by his spirit, and the spirit searches all things, yea, deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So what do you lean on uh, when things don't make sense in your life? When God has some stuff prepared for you that doesn't make sense right now. You can't understand where he's taking you. You don't know why he's leading you in that other way. Our human reasoning cannot uh, uh, acquire the information and the knowledge that God is doing and working out in our lives. Yeah. Your senses don't make sense where you're going, where I'm doing, where I'm feeling. All of my senses are telling me it's different than what God is trying to get me to do. Yeah. Where he's taking you is too deep for your senses to comprehend. Come you got to understand that you ain't going to never make sense with your senses that God, your human abilities to understand the divine nature of what God is doing in your life. Mm. Your carnal senses can't read into where the spirit man is going. Amen. See, that's what our inability is. You, you do all you can to try to understand, mm -hmm. but somehow your carnal senses will not read into where your spirit is taking you. Amen. So, Ever been in a situation where you couldn't see your way out? Mm -hmm. Huh? Ha, 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 have people told you to pray mm -hmm. and trust God and did nothing? Mm -hmm. Huh? Trusting God can be hard, ain't it? Mm 
Now it's hard. One of the hardest things to do is trust in God when things don't make sense. Huh? When you don't understand where God is leading you, it's hard to try to get to and trust God. Understanding God is an impossible thing in itself, ain't it? Yeah. Huh? I, I, my wife knows I got Kurt Whalen. Kurt Whalen is a, a gospel saxophonist. He's a jazz saxophonist. In one of his CDs, he said, understanding God is an, an oxymoron, ain't it? Mm -hmm. You need to understand what God is doing in your life. But to understand God is an oxymoron. How can the clay understand the potter? Huh? He speaks to us through his word, yeah. through other people, and maybe even through songs and music. Yeah. However, which way he does, he speaks to us, but most of the time we just don't what? We, don't do we just don't understand. It doesn't make sense to us what God is doing in our life. He'll speak to us during our quiet moments, morning. Sad moments, happy moments, whatever mood you're in, God finds a way to speak to you in that moment. Yeah. He'll speak great things into your life, whether now or even in the future. But how do we trust God on things that he speaks to us when they just don't make sense? Huh? When we don't see our way out. Huh? Have you ever had God to tell you to move on something, but you could not see your way out, and you hesitated to move because you yeah. did not trust him enough? See, I know somebody out there today that trusted God uh, through some things, but there are some others out there that God told you to move, but because of your senses, you couldn't see your way out of it, yeah. and then because of that, you hesitated and didn't move out on faith. Amen. For instance, God placed in my heart uh, to quit my job as a senior engineer, uh, to pastor a church full time, and, and, and that's 2007. But I didn't know how we were going to make it. Uh, I didn't know how we were going to make it on less than a third of my income. Mm -hmm. Along with me quitting my job, I also pulled out my 401k and I bought out to list the church supply store right here where we are preaching out today in our annex. Uh, running a retail store was like walking through a fog for me. I had never done any retail. All I could do was press forward. I, I couldn't, I, I made the decision, so all I could do is trust God and press forward. Is there something that God has asked you to trust him in that you just didn't, your senses didn't tell you that it was the right thing to do? Did you not see the other side of where God was trying to take you? Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by what? Faith, Faith and not by sight. Yeah. That's easier said than done, ain't it? Yeah. It's easy to say, done. we can always tell other folks, you need to walk by faith and not by sight. But our problem is our senses are always at work telling us and trying to warn us and giving us information that is counter to what God is trying to try to get us to believe. Yeah. Our carnal senses are combating our spirit every step of the way, trying to make sense out of everything that is happening in our lives, even the things that God is trying to tell us to do. We are walking in, in faith in what God is trying to tell us to do and where to go, but somehow in the midst of all of it, our senses. Come on now. Our senses is trying to Keep us from going down avenues that are, are not according to what we think is right. And it's not easy to trust the unseen, ain't it? And, and yeah. to trust and, 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 and to know that, that, that danger is down the road and you need to go down that road anyway. Uh, you want to trust God when you see the enemy down that road and in the pathway in front of you. But God told you to go anyway. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to trust God. When all of your senses, huh, my eyes can see, my ears can hear, I can feel fear, and I can feel pain, and all of that is telling me not to go down that road, but i got to trust God anyway. Amen. In our text today, Paul tells that faith is the proof of what is not seen. And our text says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. To the proof of what is not seen. Uh, to me, that is a bit scary, ain't it? Mm -hmm. How can the proof be something that I can't see? Yeah. You know, seeing is what? It's believing. That's what we said. Yeah. But actually seeing and witnessing something is opposite to what we believe because we got to see it to believe it. I mean, we ain't believing it, ain't it? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> hey, what did Thomas say? You remember what Thomas told Jesus? He said, except I put my hand inside of the scars where the nails was, where the, unless I put my hand in your side. And that's what one of the followers of Jesus, one of his closest apostles, disciples said. So are you any better than Thomas? That's what I'm going to ask you. Or is your faith any stronger than Thomas' faith? Yeah. Is our faith grown to the level that we believe when our senses are in contrary to what we see in here? Ain't it? Yeah. Our human nature is to trust our senses when what our senses sense doesn't make sense. Uh, am I right about that? That's scary, ain't it? I trust my senses more than I trust the promises of God. But that's what uh, that's the human being. That's the human nature we are. But faith is that I got to trust what I can't see. Faith yeah. is when I step out, when what my senses, uh, when my senses don't make sense, ain't it? Mm -hmm. When my senses is telling me that it don't make sense for you to go down that road, but my promise is down that road, and for me to trust God to get past my senses is not easy, ain't it? No, it's not. For what God commands us to do, when it doesn't line up with our senses, what do you do? And we all have dreams of what life is about, and 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 and, and then uh, we all, at one point in our lives, have pictured our future self and and what we'll be doing. For most of us, it's like having a dream job or a dream house or a dream car or a dream family or whatever, or maybe something you're very passionate about. But somehow you don't see how it'll happen. Amen. God has put an endeavor in your heart. He's given you a dream. But somehow your senses have added it up that it don't make sense. And it don't look like it'll happen. So to believe that something will happen before it does happen, they call that what? Faith, ain't it? But how do you trust God when it don't make sense? Or how can you continue trusting God when everything he commands us to do doesn't align up with our carnal senses? Huh? Huh? He tells you to step, but you don't see nowhere to step. He tells you to go, but you don't see anywhere to go. He tells you to see, but what you see is not in alignment with, with, with what your carnal senses tell you is safe. So your senses will tell you what's safe. And what's not. Yeah. But sometimes your senses will keep you from stepping out in faith because God told you to trust him, not your senses. Mm -hmm. See, the only way to trust God is to what? Obey. Mm -hmm. Our text said, for by the elders, they obtained a what? A good report. By faith, they understood that the words of God were framed by the word of God so that the things that are seen were uh, made things. of things that which do appear. But by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, than test of God testifying of his gifts, and by that being dead yet speaketh. But by faith, you, Enoch, was translated, he should not see death, and was found because God has translated him, for before his translation, he had a testimony that he pleased God. Uh -huh. So what did the elders do to get a good report? Huh, they give us some of the good examples, but what about others? When God asked Abraham to go into the land of Canaan, Abraham had no idea where he was going. His senses told him it was the wrong thing to do. All he could do was pack up his things and go in the direction that God has instructed him to go. And that's not an easy thing, is it? When God asked Moses to deliver his people Israel, uh, Egypt, uh, Israel from Egypt, Moses was unsure of how because Moses had a speech impediment. Moses said, I am not an eloquent speaker, neither here until nor since have spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow to speak in a slow tongue. God's answer was, he has a made a man's mouth, and who make it dumb in the death, or sin, or blind. Have not I the Lord? Now, therefore, go, and I will be thy mouth, and will teach you what to say. Yeah. See, sometimes we look at our own inabilities and think that God uh, can't get the job done through us. God. But God can work through you as well as he can work through me. Amen. Even when he worked through a donkey. Amen. If he can work through a donkey, I know he can work through you and I. Amen. See, the thing is, 
when we try to do things outside of the, the realm where, 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 where our confidence is, Come on. it don't make sense, does it? Mm -hmm. Now, you're telling me to speak, but I'm not a speaker. Come on. You're telling me to write, but I'm not a writer. <laughs> but how do I trust you to look beyond my, my sensory abilities to be able to do the things you desire to do? So it's not easy. Mm -hmm. See, didn't understand it all Moses, didn't understand all what God was trying to tell him, but what he did, he obeyed him, was able to deliver to him, walk through the Red Sea into dry land. If we could only get past of what it looked like, what it sounded like, what our senses are telling us, we could do some great things, couldn't yeah. we? But our problem is every time we try to step out on faith, our senses. Start telling them some things. See, when God tells you to trust him and obey him, I know it's not easy, nope. but obey means that he asks you to do some things that make no sense to you. And there's something. God don't ask you to do things that make sense. He asks you to do things that don't make sense so that you can trust him over your senses. Because your senses are trying to tell you what makes sense. So what shall I do to obey him when it don't make sense? Come on. Huh? According to James says, faith without action is what? Is dead. You got to move and get to work instead of looking back for something to happen. God will do his part, but faith demands us to what? To do our part, even when it don't make sense. In order for us to get to where God wants us to be in our future, you need to work on the things now to get there that don't make sense. You need to put God in everything you work for now. Trust him on things that you are learning now Amen. so that he can fulfill that promise in your future. Amen. You can't sit here and believe God will bring you to the great call and to this great promise, this great expectation in your life. But that what good is it that you don't apply the work that God has uh, ordained you to do to get that thing? Faith without works is what? Is dead. Regardless of what God asks you to do, even when it don't make sense, we should obey because it will strengthen our faith for the greater mission. See, God don't ask you to do something now without having a greater mission ahead of you. Amen. He's testing you now on this yeah. so that he can see whether or not you can handle that. Regardless of what God asks you to do, you should be able to step out on that to help us to reach our promises. We got to be able to work while things don't make sense. Come on. God puts us in situations that don't make sense. And yeah. honestly, we are not to understand it at all. See, we think we're supposed to understand everything that God takes us through. We are to trust him when we don't understand it. Amen. Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. See, don't let your human reasoning uh, uh, win over you trusting God. Don't let your senses win over you trusting God. If God says, believe it, even when it don't make sense. Yeah. And that's the problem with us. We have to seek to understand everything, don't we? Huh? And to understand everything is to make sense out of everything. Sometimes too much understanding can hurt us. Therefore, God doesn't require us to always understand it. But yeah. it did tells us that we got to trust him even when we don't understand. Trust him on things that seem to have uh, no outcome. Mm. Huh? Have you Go down that road and do that. And I'm saying going down that road is a bad outcome. But God told me to go down that road. Mm. So how do I trust him when my senses mm. are telling me there is danger down that road? Mm. See, finally in our text he said, but without faith is what? Impossible to please him. Yeah. That he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he is the reward of them that who diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. So your faith doesn't need to be great when you start to trust God. He said that if you have the faith of the size of a mustard seed, you tell that mountain to be ye removed and it shall be removed. See, it can be small as a mustard seed. You know how small that is, but you got to have it, ain't it? it I don't care if your faith is local. You got to have it. But how is how, how big is faith anyway? <laughs> I don't think we got a measurable account of how big is faith is. But he said that if your faith is as little as a mustard seed, you can please God. 
You can't please God without having faith. You got to believe in that. If God can accept your faith that small and still break miracles in your life, imagine what he can do if you had greater faith. Huh? When things don't make sense uh, at the moment, don't question it. Just believe that there is an outcome of every situation in your life. Has faith in God even when things don't seem to be coming together in your life. Have faith in everything you do because without faith in action, it's dead. Yeah. Trust in him and avoid trying to understand his purpose for your life. Everything will come together in the end, won't it? Yeah. Uh, and his reward uh, waits uh, for those who are willing to trust him and step out on faith and not by sight. His rewards are for those that obey him when your senses don't make sense. Come on. So as we close this morning, life doesn't always make sense. Mm -hmm. And to be truthful about it, life most of the time don't always make sense. Amen. Life will throw you to some problems and yeah. it'll throw you some looks that sometimes you don't understand. Yeah. Our senses go off the chain sometimes yeah. and that when things happen outside of the norm, see somehow we have to catch hold to our senses and use them along with our faith mm -hmm. to make sense out of this life. Yeah. They are bound for a reason but not to control us uh, to the point where our faith is left out of the equation. The, our text says without faith it is impossible to please God. Yeah. God gave us all of our senses, but we must allow them to work in union mm -hmm. with our faith Amen. to get the best results out of our life. Okay. Just like pain. It's a blessing, ain't it? Amen. I, I know we don't like it. We don't like pain, but it's needed. Pain is, the, is not the problem. Pain is a sensation that lets you know you got a problem. See, we understand we don't like pain, but pain ain't your problem. Pain is trying to get you to believe and to understand you got a real serious issue that has nothing to do with the pain. The pain is a reflection of what's causing the problem in your life. See, even when pain comes into our lives, faith has to help us get through the pain. So our senses are needed, but not exclusive of what? Of faith. Don't allow your senses to be a micromanage your life without the faith to trust God in the impossible. I read Sal and, and Paul Porter got this song. He said that I trust in you. He said, I will trust in you with all my heart. Hey, with all my heart, I will lean on my own understanding. In all of my ways, I acknowledge you because I know that you will bring me through. It's you that I trust, not my wisdom, not my knowledge. It's you that I trust. You are my peace. When I'm confused, so confused, I keep my mind stayed on you. There are, aren't nothing, there is nothing that you can't do. It's you that I trust, not my wisdom, not my knowledge. It's you that I trust. So until we get to that point where we take our eyes off of our senses, our emotions, and we put our trust in Jesus, we'll never defeat that enemy that is coming after us. I, I sent this blog from Warren Buffett that he sent to his daughter. He said, you'll become, you'll continue to suffer if you have an emotional reaction to everything that's said to you. True power is sitting back and observing things with logic. True power is your strength. If words control you, that means everyone else can control you. Breathe and allow things to pass. See, when things don't make sense, all is all about how you react to it, ain't it? Amen. The first reaction is to respond defensively. Yes. But with the power of God trusting working in your life, step back and look at it from a different perspective. Make me what God is doing in your life is not to hurt you, but is to help you. See, sometimes pain keeps you from getting crazy, from getting stupid, doing some things that's worse off than the road. See, God operates outside of the normal, ain't it? And the expected sensible thing to do. So we must allow God to do things in your life when they don't make sense to us. Man. Remember, things don't make uh, don't have to make sense for you to be good. Yeah. Things don't have to be make sense to be good to you. Some things are good to you that don't make sense. So do I need to say it again? Things don't have to make sense to you to be good to you. I know it's hard for us to understand in our human reasoning. 
But you have to learn to trust God even in these times when things are happening in your life that don't make sense. You got to let go and let God. We're always saying that. But trust him when things don't look good. Trust him when things don't make sense. Trust him when things in your life are all out of whack. Don't see any end to it. But you still got to trust him. I like what old folks said. I'm going to see what the end going to be, huh? Amen. You got to trust God and go wait and see what the end going to be. Because God got some good things out there waiting for you. If he made you a promise. All you need to do is wait on it. And if you wait on it long enough, God will help you to be able to reveal unto you what you should receive if you would only put his trust in him. Don't allow your senses to keep you away from the promises that God has given unto you. God wants to bless you. And he wants to help you. But the thing is, everything your eyes see, everything that your senses feel, mm -hmm. everything that your ears hear, especially in the AI world, you in uh, we in this AI world, and we in a world now that they can make voices, they can make pictures, they can make words, they can make anything, anything. sound like, look like. So we gotta have God. We gotta have the Holy Spirit in us to give us the power of discernment, so that we can understand that what's good for us and what's not, because our senses are, are only reacting to uh, to stimuli. That, that, that's affecting them. And they are operating based on what they are designed to do. But we are not designed to operate following our senses. Mm -hmm. We were designed to follow God. Follow his commandments. And listen to his word. Because he said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not into your own understanding. Mm -hmm. But in all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. That's our way to the future. Our way to the success and the way to uh, make it in this world today is to be able to operate by following Christ, not our senses. God bless you. May heaven ever smile upon you. Let us pray. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come. And hopefully we've said some words to encourage us to put our trust in you. Don't trust our senses. Don't trust anything other than your word, your spirit. I trust in your spirit. And then he said, even try the spirit by the Spirit. So we thank you today, and we glorify your name because you are worthy to be praised. And we're asking you now, Lord, to just continue to help us to be able to accept your will, working in our lives, even when it don't make sense. Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. May heaven have a smile upon you.